Good evening. Good evening, lovely, lovely people. I hope you're well. Can everybody hear me okay? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Uh, lovely to see you too. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for joining. Just let me know if you can see me, if you can hear me okay. Great to see you again as well. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to make sure that... Uh, yes, yes. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for confirming that. Okay. Hi from early morning. Wow, you must be somewhere in maybe Australia or somewhere early morning. Mashhad, fantastic. Hello, hello. We can see and hear. Fantastic. Thank you. Your background is dark. Yes. Um, yes, I, I'm not at home. I'm actually somewhere else um, and I didn't want to cancel this live. So um, I have, I'm still doing the live, but I'm just not at home. Newcastle, Karaj, Dublin, from Iran, all over, all over. Uh, thank you. Vancouver, Canada. Lovely. So nice to have you. Lovely, lovely that you could join me on my final night of the week. Stockholm and people are still telling me where they're joining from. Lovely UK, Tehran. Thank you. Uh, so as you know, I've been doing this live session all week. Uh, we started on Monday and you've been joining me. <coughs> excuse me, every single night of this week. I really, really thank you very much. And tonight is the final of these three five nights. I call it my marathon, marathon, because it's five nights in a row. So tonight is the final night of these five nights, but I will see you again on Sunday. Uh, and we're going to continue every single Sunday live. It's been so nice to come and see you every single night. It's been so nice. I, I'm starting to get used to it. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, I will have to stop the every night one. Uh, but still, we'll see each other on Sunday, hopefully. So lovely, love you. Um, I, I can see, I can see that you're still telling me where you're joining from. Thank you very much. Thank you very much all over the place. Wow, I, I truly am blessed. Um, I feel very, very blessed. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel very blessed. I feel uh, so lucky that I've got so many people from different corners of the world uh, tuning in to watch me and listen to me. There are so many other things that you can be doing right now, but instead you are giving me your attention for the next half an hour. And I really, really thank you for that. I am very grateful for that. Okay, um, before I, I start with tonight's session, um, there is something I posted. I think it was last night or maybe early this morning. I can't remember because I was up till like two in the morning answering messages this morning and I still have lots of messages. If you have still sent me your receipts for the podcast uh, sessions, please don't worry. I will get to you and I will enroll you, I promise. I've got so many people who are still enrolling for the podcasts. Lovely, I promise you, I will answer all the messages. Um, uh, by the end of tonight, definitely. So please don't worry. Um, there was one story I posted, I think it was last night. It was from a lovely gentleman who uh, I, I got to know him a little bit, I think last year or the year before. And he sent me such a nice message. He said, Leila, I've learned from you in your live session. I've learned from you on your courses. Thank you very much. Um, but the most important part for me, and this honestly, I felt a lump in my throat. When I read this, I felt a lump in my throat. That's how we say it. It means I got really emotional. Uh, I felt a lump in my throat. I'm going to put all these in the caption on YouTube. I felt a lump in my throat. You know, when you hear something or read something, you get so emotional and, you know, <laughs> you, you like something so much. I felt a lump in my throat when I read this. 
this gentleman said, <clears throat> I'm not afraid to make mistakes anymore. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. For somebody to say that, my job is done, yeah? I feel like I've done my job. I feel like I have finished my responsibility with that gentleman. If he is not afraid to make mistakes, my job is done. And I am so proud of that gentleman and lots and lots of you, lots of you who talk. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes, you just keep on talking, you keep on speaking. Nobody cares if you make mistakes. If you remember the very first night of the marathon on Monday, the live that we had was about native English speakers who make mistakes, yeah? So if you're learning a second language, of course you're going to make mistakes, but not to be worried about it and not to let that stop you, but to still go out and speak and my job is done. I'm so, so happy, so proud. It really made my day. Uh, reading that and, and I posted it obviously as a story and I think I wrote the idiom uh, what idiom did I write that is music to my ears or that is music to any teacher's ears uh, that is exactly what we love to hear it really really makes us happy so thank you thank you so much okay lovely um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you must be so proud of what you're doing. Neda, that's very kind of you. I'm not proud. Of course, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm happy with my job. I love what I'm doing. But what makes me proud is the result that I see. And the result that I see is not from me. It's from you. It's all of you putting in the hard work everybody in this live session tonight, everybody who's been in these lives all these five days, five days, everybody who goes and watches these videos again on YouTube, all of you, all of you, just by listening to my live sessions, you are here to learn English. You are trying so hard. You've got your life, you've got your kids, you've got your jobs, you've got lots and lots of other things, but you still want to improve yourselves. That's what I'm proud of. That is what gives me a lump in my throat. What I'm really proud of. Nobody can do that for you. You are doing it. You have become your own boss. You have started to manage and control your own lives. Fantastic. What better than that? Absolutely fantastic. So am I proud of what I'm doing? If that is my result, I'm very proud. I'm very proud of what I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, speaking of, uh, do you mind if I ask you to save your live classes? All of my lives will be saved. I'm sorry, I should have um, uh, explained this. So I have my live session on Instagram and I record it and then I post it onto YouTube and it stays on YouTube. And every night after the live, I post the link in my story on Instagram. I also have a section, uh, yes, sure, I'll turn the comments off. Um, I also have a section uh, on my main page uh, in the highlights or the little circles. One of them is called YouTube. And I think the very first one we did was an orange color. I think it was about Amazon, the very first one we did. So that's where you will find all of the links of my YouTube lives, okay? I don't I don't get rid of them. I save them. Um, they're not very, very, very uh, priceless and, and useful, but hopefully if people can learn maybe one idiom, maybe one thing about the culture, if they can learn something even from other students, I'm happy, you know, that, that's really good. Right, um, what I'm going to do first tonight, if you don't mind, because it's our five, fifth and final night, I'm going to have a little test of you. Is that okay? Uh, let's just do a little review just to see what you can remember from these five nights. So if you don't mind, I'm going to turn the comments back on. 
um, and I'm going to give you maybe a question or a sentence and I want to see if you can remember what we talked about from Monday until now in the live sessions. Hopefully everybody is okay with that. Give me a thumbs up if you're okay for me to start. It's just going to be a very short recap. Is everybody okay with that? We just do a little review of what we've learnt. Give me a thumbs up if you're happy to do that. Hmm. Uh, I've got a heart. Lovely, lovely, thank you. My first thumb up, thank you, thank you. I'm getting thumbs up now. Fantastic, so you're okay. Uh, one thing I just wanna mention with you, thank you so much, thank you, thank you. One thing I wanna mention is um, reviewing is not like a test. Of course, it's not a test. So if anybody gives the wrong answer, that's okay. We're all here to learn, yeah? I'm here to learn from you and you might be able to learn something from me. I don't know. It depends if my life is useful <laughs> uh, for you, but we're all here to learn, okay? So mistakes is okay. This is a safe place. This is a safe place, right? The first thing that we learned on Monday was a mistake that native English people make, and it's very embarrassing. Uh, if a native English person wants to say, I don't care, I don't care, it's not important. There is a sentence that they say, I don't want the correct sentence, I want the wrong sentence, please. Can you remember what it is? If a native English speaker wants to say, I don't care, it's not important, what do they say? And the very last word is less, less. Can anyone, fantastic, wow, they're all doing it. <laughs> I'm just telling my daughter here. Uh, fantastic, fantastic, thank you. So the mistake is I could care less. Well done, well done. That is the mistake. But then we said that's wrong and we corrected it, didn't we? And we said the correct version is I couldn't care less. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, I couldn't care less. Well done, well done. Now you are giving me the correct version. Very good. So all of you, you know more than maybe 20, 30% of native English speakers. Lots of people say it like this and it's wrong. So if you hear it, there we go. We've even got somebody, Samira Mokri. I could care less as a cross. I love it. I couldn't care less. Two ticks. You are natural teachers, all of you. <laughs> Born teachers, fantastic. I couldn't care less. Well done, well done. So if I want to say, um, that's not important, it's not important to me, I don't care, I can say I couldn't care less. Very good, well done, well done, thank you. Uh, let's go to the next one, the next one. If somebody invites me to go to the cinema with them tonight, I don't want to go, uh, but I don't want to directly say no, how can I say it so culturally it's acceptable and it's not rude? So you've asked me, Leila, would you like to go to the cinema tonight with me? I don't want to be rude and say no. What else can I say? I will see. Very good. Very good. Uh, we will see. Yeah. We'll see. Very good. Very good. Well done. Well done. Yeah. We'll see. I'd love to, but I can't, okay, that's good, that's good, we'll see, mm. <laughs> fantastic, uh, I'll see, we'll see, mm. don't know, not sure, we'll see, go ahead please, you go ahead, not sure, fantastic, well done, well done, oh my god, you're all native English speakers, aren't you now, excellent, thank you, I'll check, yeah, I hate to say that, very good, very good, maybe later, very good, very good. Um, I am, honestly, every time I see the correct answer, it's like I get a whole new set of batteries put inside of me. 
Okay, uh, the next one. <laughs> Sorry. The next one, my daughter's just given me a very strange look. Um, the next one is the word funny. Funny. And I think we had this last night, if I'm not mistaken, or the night before. Funny. We said uh, funny has four meanings. I gave you three meanings. And then one of our friends reminded me, thank you very much, about the fourth meaning. Okay. I'm going to tell you a situation and please tell me what does funny mean in my situation, in my sentence. Okay. Uh, the night before. Thank you. Okay. Let's say somebody says to me, uh, Leila, I was born in Staffordshire. Staffordshire. It's the name of a uh, um, it's the name of a county or stan. It's the name of a county in England. Somebody says, uh, I was born in Staffordshire, which is close to the north of England. I want to say, Chakajoleb, oh my God. Uh, that's funny. I was born there too. What does funny mean in my sentence? Does it mean it's a joke? What does it mean? Hmm. Afsane has given me all the meanings. Very good. Very good. Atefe, interesting. Very good. Very good. Pershang, uh, Shasavari, interesting. PS4842, interesting. Very good. Very good. Well done. Well done. So if something is interesting, wow, that's really interesting. We say that's funny. That's funny. The same thing happened to me. That's funny. Incredible. Interesting. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, let's give a different example. Let's say, for example, uh, I might tell my daughter, Ella, can you smell something funny? Can you smell something funny? Funny. Now, again, that can't be a joke, can it? What can it mean? Can you smell something funny? It doesn't mean interesting. Yeah, something. We can't smell something interesting. Uh, what do you think it means? Can you smell something funny? Hmm, something smells funny. Very good. Strange. Thank you. Thank you. Unusual. Strange. Excellent. Excellent. Fantastic. And the last one. Um, I have gone to a shop. I've done some shopping. I have asked them to give me a little bag for the eggs that I've bought, uh, but they haven't given me a bag. So I asked them again. Again, they haven't given me a bag. I keep asking and now I'm starting to get a bit frustrated. And I'm gonna say, I don't want to be funny, but could you give me a bag, please? I've asked five times. What does funny mean in that sentence? I don't want to be funny, but could you give me a bag, please? I've asked five times. What does it mean? Complaining, rude, R-U-D-E, rude, rude. Very good, very good. It means I don't want to be rude, but come on, I've asked you five times. How many times do I have to ask you? Very good. Upset, mm. rude, rude, well done. It's like a kind of complaining, yes, yes. I don't want to be funny, but, I don't mean to be funny, but, fantastic, fantastic, well done. Very, very well done. And my final question that I want to ask you for tonight's review is this. If <clears throat> it's somebody's birthday, I've got them a gift, I put it in the bag and when I give them the bag, what do I say? Of course, I say, happy birthday. This is a little something for your birthday. Then what do I say? Anybody? Unexpected. Okay. Thank you, Mehnoush. You're amazing, Leila, to teach us these things. You are amazing for learning them. Well done to you. The receipt is in the bag. See? The receipt is in the bag. Here's a small gift for you. The receipt is in the bag. Well done. Well done. 
just like perfect native English. Very good, very good. Um, the receipt is in the bag. Yes, I put the receipt in the bag. The receipt is in the bag. Fantastic. Very good, very good. Yeah. Uh, well done. Right, I'm going to put my paper down and I'm going to give you a round of applause. Well done to you. Well done to you. Very, very good. So you've just shown me that these five nights that we've had these sessions, you've really been focusing, you've been paying attention, you've been listening. Some of you have gone back and maybe you've watched the video again. Well done, well done. So these are very important. Please don't think, oh, that's easy. These are important things that a lot of other nationalities, international people don't know these things. Now that you know these things, it will really help you in your communication, in your understanding. If you see these things, if you hear these things, you know what they mean. So fantastic. Well done. Assessment finished. <laughs> yes, you can breathe now. You can breathe. Well done. Well done. Yes, you do need to clap for yourself. Well done. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Um... <coughs> Excuse me. Why should we put the receipt in the bag for the exchange or return? Yes. What does it mean? Yes. So we talked about this last night. Um, I Thank you. Very good. Very good. I'm just going to turn the comments off. Um, we talked about this, I think, last night, if I'm not mistaken. When we give somebody a gift, this gift could be for housewarming, They've just moved into a new house, new baby, new job, promotion. They could be retiring, getting married, birthday, anything, anything. And we want to give them a gift. Uh, we've bought something for them. It might be that that person doesn't like that gift or the size might be wrong. The color might be wrong. If it's edible or if it's something they can drink, they might be allergic to that. So for whatever reason that person might not like the gift that I've got for them and they don't want it, okay? So usually before, a lot of people would say, here's a little something for your birthday, happy birthday. I've got the receipt if you change your mind. I've got the receipt if you change your mind. That's what we used to say, okay? But then gradually, a lot of people started feeling a bit embarrassed. They wouldn't tell me, Leila, give me the receipt. I don't want this. So now we automatically put the receipt in the bag. So when I give you a gift, if you don't like it, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. You can secretly go and exchange it, return it, give it to somebody else, whatever you want to do. And you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. So that's the whole idea. The receipt is in the bag. If you don't like this present, do what anything you like with it. Return it, exchange it, sell it, whatever you like. Basically, that's that's basically what it means. OK, lovely. So that's what we talked about last night. And last night's live is on YouTube as well. If anybody wants it. Very good. OK, um, Tonight, and I've, I've uh, put the title, I was thinking of talking a little bit about British culture in the workplace, okay? Because over the past four nights, we've talked a lot about, for example, everyday English, you know, outside on the street, friends, family, work colleagues as well. But I know a lot of you are either working or if you're not currently working in an English speaking country, you're hoping to either move to an English speaking country and you'll start working or you might already be working in, you know, an English setting, maybe in Iran, not even outside the country. So I just want to talk a little bit about um, maybe an idiom that we use in the work setting and the expectation, the cultural expectations at work. I think that might be useful as well. Um, because at work, we don't want to make mistakes, especially with our boss. Our boss will understand if I'm from a different country. Hopefully, my boss will understand if I've said something. I don't want to be rude. It's because I don't know. I don't know the British culture. I'm still learning. So hopefully, my boss will understand. But even before 
that happens before I start getting embarrassed, it's good to know just a few little things that will hopefully help. Okay. The first one <clears throat> is, and I'm sure if you're already working here and you've lived here for quite some time, I'm sure you already know. English people, not English people, sorry, the British culture, which is people from any nationality, the culture here is that we give a lot of focus to work. So usually, typically from nine in the morning until four, five, maximum six o'clock in the evening, people work. But because we work quite hard and we focus and our work, our performance, our results are very important to us, at the same time, we are very strict about our holidays. We're very strict when it's six o'clock. No, I'm not going to work anymore because it's six o'clock. I'm not going to continue. If there's any work that's left, I'm going to do it tomorrow. My work day has finished. Okay. And usually the boss, the manager, the supervisor understands this. So they will not put pressure. They shouldn't put pressure on staff to complete the job before they go home. Five o'clock is five o'clock. That's it. I'm not going to work anymore because my contract, my job, is from nine to five. It's now 10 past five. No, I'm not gonna work. I only have to work from nine till five. So we're very strict about this. During the work hours, we don't go shopping. <laughs> we don't go shopping. We don't sit on the phone with our friends. We focus, obviously, because this is company time. This is the time that I need to be working. And if I don't work, it's like I'm stealing from my employer. So I have to work. But at the same time, my weekends are very important. Many times myself, if I got a phone call, I, honestly, if I got a phone call from my boss, I wouldn't answer the phone. I would not answer the phone and say, hi, why are you calling me? It's my weekend. I just wouldn't answer the phone. It's my weekend. Why are you calling me? <laughs> it's my weekend. So the same way that Monday to Friday, we're very focused on the work, on the job that we do. 15 minute break, that's it. Not 20 minutes, not 25 minutes. 45 minute lunch, that's it. Not one hour, not two hours. We're very strict with these. My weekend is my weekend. Yeah? So I tell my boss, all of us, this is what we say. Don't call me at the weekend. This is my weekend. This is my time. Don't call me in the evening because I will not answer my phone. This is not just me. This is the way we are as a culture. Um, my time is my time. And usually you will find that employers, bosses, supervisors, they respect this. They have to respect this very much. OK, uh, I'm going to come back to everybody here just to make sure you're still here. You haven't gone away. <laughs> um, and is everybody OK with what I've said so far? Does that make sense? Uh, any questions so far? Is there any word I've used or anything that you would like me to explain a little bit more? Is everybody OK so far? You are late. That's OK. That's okay. I'm recording this. Yeah. Thumbs up. Lovely. Lovely. Very good. Very good. Yes. It's very important. Fantastic. It's very, yes, it does. Thank you. It's very important that when I work in an English speaking country, I know my right. Yeah. I know that five o'clock is five o'clock. Please don't ask me to work till 530. If you want me to work till 530, that's fine. You have to pay me. Nobody works for free, yeah? And that's not because we are cheap. No, it's because the work that we do is valuable. We value our time. We value our work. We value our performance. So I'm not going to work for free, uh, usually in an office, in a company, in a business. I'm not going to work for free my, my employer, if you want me to work, that's fine. 
I will work extra, of course, but you have to pay me. The, uh, not Layla, not me, Layla, I'm self-employed. I am my own boss. <laughs> I don't have another boss, but normally, normally, in uh, an English speaking in uh, companies and businesses, we, we tell the supervisor, we tell the boss, we tell the manager. Sometimes our employers forget because they have clients, they have deadlines, they have pressure and they forget, oh, it's six o'clock, seven o'clock, please do this, please send that email, please. No, sorry, no, my time is finished. Please ask somebody else or I can do it tomorrow very strict very strict and if you are strict from the beginning then that employer that boss will learn that they can't abuse your kindness you're very kind i know iranian people are very kind and if their boss says i know it's five o'clock i know you've finished but can you please just send one more email can you please just do this can you please and Iranian people are so kind, so respectful. They say, yes, okay, that's wrong. That's wrong. That employer, that boss should not do that. They should not ab abuse their power. After that, employer looking for excuse to fire us. Um, <clears throat> um, if they fire you because of something like this, that is illegal. If you can prove that it was after your working out in the UK, I don't know about the other countries, in the UK, if your work time stops, your shift, your contract, anything, stops at five o'clock, if your boss wants you to continue working, they don't pay you extra, if you say, no, I'm not going to do it because my time has finished, if they fire you because of this, that is illegal. If you can prove this, you can take that person to court and you can get huge compensation because it's against the law. In terms of work settings, can you please cover opening and closing conversations for a virtual meeting, especially with colleagues that we have meetings with on daily basis? That's a very good question. So just to uh, tell Mm, rephrase your question for other people. A virtual meeting basically is an online meeting. A lot of people use Microsoft Teams, Zoom, all these kind of platforms to have virtual meetings. This lovely uh, person, what is it? Nas Moments. Okay. This lovely uh, person is saying, what do we usually say at the beginning of a meeting or the end of a meeting? Yes. So usually what we do when people come online, you will find usually our cameras are off. And if we have our camera on, everybody is muted. We are mute when we come online. That is just pure respect. So if my camera is on or off, that's fine. That's my choice. But all of us are muted when we come online. Uh, we unmute ourselves just to say hi. Sometimes we just text, hi everyone. We mute ourselves again quickly because I am not the host of this meeting. Somebody else is the host, okay? So then the host comes and starts the meeting. Hi everyone, thank you that you could join. If I cannot, if I, Layla, cannot join that meeting, I have to inform the person beforehand Please accept my apologies. I can't attend the meeting because I have another meeting. I am with a client. We have to give our reason why we can't attend. And usually the host of the meeting will go through the plan. What are we going to do today in the meeting? They will go through the plan. It's very organized. Before the meeting starts, usually they will email you the plan of the meeting so everybody knows. Today we're talking about these three things, nothing extra because we don't have time. Yeah, so it's very organized. There is someone who is typing the meeting or today with artificial intelligence, it's already recorded. At the end of the meeting, they ask any questions. Agenda, lovely. Yes, Kevin, thank you. Um, at the end of the meeting, they ask, are there any questions? Is there any further business? 
that you would like to talk about. If anybody wants to mention something, they have to say it at the very end of the meeting when everything is finished. And in a meeting, we never talk about something private. In a team, if I am the only one who has a problem with my software, with my computer, with my client, I am the only one who has a problem, I have to wait until everybody has left the meeting and then I have a private conversation with my boss. I don't talk about it in front of everybody. It's very private. So these are a few things um, that we have, yeah? So mainly it's the host who does the talking in, in these meetings. Um, if we have a question, we put our hand up. We don't just start talking. And one important thing, if anybody is late to a meeting, they don't say, hi everyone, sorry I'm late. That's very, very rude, very rude. We join, we stay silent, we stay on mute. Usually we just text, hi, sorry I'm late, that's it. Just to be respectful, nothing else because they're in the middle of talking, they're in the meeting, okay? That's usually how it's done. Uh, and in the <clears throat> online meeting, how can we leave the platform? What idiom can we use to say goodbye? Very good, very good. So um, you want to leave. If, do you want to leave to make a phone call? Do you want to leave because you have an important email you need to send? Do you want to leave for a short amount of time? You can say, for example, I'm just going to pop out and I'll be back. I'm just going to pop out and I'll be back, for example. Uh, or you can say, um, um, if it's okay, I'm going to leave and I will catch myself up. I will catch myself up with the, with the minutes. So anything I miss, I am responsible to go and check what I'm missing if I leave early. I will catch myself up. I will catch myself up. So sorry for everybody, I have to leave. I will catch myself up. We thank the host. Thank you everybody and we leave very silently. Okay. I have to drop off. We definitely say that as well for online. Absolutely. Um, okay. Cop out? No, we don't cop out. Yeah. Um, okay. Be right back. Yeah, yeah, that's an acronym. Sure, sure. <laughs> we'll be right back. <coughs> Excuse me. How long is the break time or lunch time in the workplace? That's a very good question, Elahe. Um, again, it is the law, it is the rule that every company, every business, every employer, they have to give you half an hour, 45 minutes lunch. They have to. Uh, so in the middle of your lunch, they can't give you a job to do. That's your lunch period, yeah? Uh, some places it's half an hour, some places 45 minutes, some places one hour. That thing can vary. But in the middle of your lunch hour, they legally, they shouldn't bother you. That's, that's your time. If you want to use your lunch hour to work, that's different. They might come and talk to you because they can see you're not having your lunch. But we always like to separate work from lunch. We like to separate that, definitely. Um, I have to escape. I have to escape. We don't usually escape. Uh, but I'll catch you later, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, Ar Arena... Uh, Hassan Zadeh, sorry, at the break. Yes, yes. Uh, when we plan to speak during the meeting, should, should, why, hi, or are we allowed easily to talk about our vision? Um, there's a typing issue there. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, are the company pay for break? Um, some companies do. Some companies don't. It depends on the company if they pay for your break. I know the colleges and universities I worked at, they didn't pay us for break time. Uh, but but that's it depends on the company. Uh, should they pay for the break time or not? That depends on the company. 
Uh, I know that if you are not in your office, you're somewhere else because of your job, you are somewhere else, you're with a client, you're on holiday, not on holiday, you're on business, you've traveled somewhere, yes, the company will pay for everything. Okay. Should we say hi? Right, right, right. So, um, yes, if I am the host of a meeting and I have talked about the agenda and now I want to pass the meeting over to you, for example, and you're going to talk, I will say, okay, now, for example, it is Ella's turn. Ella's going to take uh, the meeting and Ella will just say, hi, everyone. That's it. Hi, everyone. And then she will start talking. So it's not, hi, everyone. Hope you're okay. How's everyone doing? No, straight to the point. Hi, everyone. And usually, first, we also say thank you to the host. Thank you, Leila. Thank you, whoever. Hi, everyone. And then we just start talking. Um, yes. Oh, my goodness. It's so, so late. English people sometimes get gifts from charity that are secondhand. Is this part of English culture? Yes. Yes. Yes, a lot of people go to a charity shop and they buy something that's new. Second hand, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it's not nice to give a gift that is second hand, no. Unless it's antique, then of course it's second hand, yes. But if you're talking about clothes and stuff, no. It can't be secondhand. That's not very nice. Um, they might go to a charity shop. They might get you, for example, a candle. It's new, but they bought it from a charity shop. That's okay. Should they pay for meetings? Um, some places pay for meetings. Yes, some places do. Some places don't. So again, it depends on the business. Knowingly, the culture of here is so important. Yes, Firuza, absolutely, absolutely. That's the problem. Nobody comes and explains, Leila, in the UK, in the workplace, we do this, we don't do that, that's rude, we expect this. Nobody tells this to us, right? Nobody tells us this. It's just one of those things that by looking at other people, we learn over time. Do you mind if I want to know whether you also throw the instructions for IELTS? Throw the instructions for IELTS. I don't teach IELTS anymore. No, sorry if that's your question. Can I buy gifts to people in the company? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Um, gifts for people in the company. Uh, if it's something that people in the company do, then that's lovely if you take part as well. But if it's not normal, then that might not be a very good idea. Some places, some workplaces, for example, at Christmas time, they get, they get a Christmas card and they give a Christmas card to everybody. Sometimes um, what we usually do is if it's someone's birthday, I'm just going to put my card down for a minute. If, for example, let's say it is Sarah's birthday, okay, and we're all in the team, we're all in the department together, usually one person is um, responsible for collecting money from everybody. You don't have to pay money if you don't want to, but it's expected. One pound, two pounds, five pounds, ten pounds, as much as you want. This person collects all the money, and they have a conversation, everybody in the team, if it's Sarah's birthday, what shall we get everybody together? Shall we get a gift card? Shall we get a book? What shall we do? So everybody decides, one person buys it, everybody signs the card and they give the gift. So individuals don't give Sarah different birthday presents. It's from everybody together. That's what we do. Uh... Yes, that's what I just said. M R L Yarali. Have you got anything like you want to collect money for another? Yes. What Persian food or dessert do you recommend for American potluck? Right. American potluck. Americans usually love Persian food. I remember whenever in America we had a potluck, the foods that they really liked, one of them was salad olivier. They absolutely loved it. But it's important. One thing is important is if you are making something and you are taking it to a potluck, 
Some people write the ingredients on a card or a piece of paper and put it next to the food. So other people know what's in here. If I go to a potluck and there is food from a Japanese lady, lovely, what's inside? Where is the Japanese lady? I can't find her to ask her. And if I don't know what's inside it, I'm not going to eat it, yeah? Uh, so some people, they write all the ingredients um, and, and they put it next to the food. But I know Americans love salad olivier. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they love any kind of pasta salad. The uh, gourmet sabzi and rice is a big, big thing. They love that. They really like the taste of that. Kebabs, always a winner. Uh, what else? These are the things that I remember that they really like. Other kinds of Iranian food like fisenjoun and these kind of things, they're, because they're a little bit unusual for Western people, it's 50-50. <laughs> it might be a bit 50-50 because of the color, because of the taste, but the other things are really good. Um, could I, sorry, could I, خیلی دیر شد من قرار بود فقط نیم ساعت وقت شما رو بگیرم. Could I call everyone sir or ma'am for someone that you don't know their name? Sorry, I'm from Indonesia. Okay, lovely, lovely. Right, so if you are working in a in the UK and also in America as well, parts of America, not everywhere. Usually uh, in a department, in a team, people are usually on first term basis, uh, first name, sorry, on first name basis. So they go around talking to each other, calling each other by their first name, usually. Um, but whenever we correspond with each other, if we're emailing or writing letters or anything, then we start saying Mr. and Mrs. and that kind of thing. Um, okay, Olivia salad is actually Russian. Okay, sorry, but they liked it. Very good. Cholizard, English people like Cholizard. There you go. What's the difference between no worries and don't worry? Um, no worries is more American. Don't worry is more British. Both of them are correct. Um, okay, very good, very good. Barberry bread, okay. <laughs> um, same like Australia, yes, yes, lovely, lovely. Very good, okay. I wanted to teach you an idiom as well, and I keep talking and I forget. Uh, there's one idiom that I want to throw this in the lesson for tonight, and then I'll let you go. This is my idiom. This is an idiom that we use at work, but it can be used outside of work as well in normal everyday situations. Let's say, for example, you're sitting at your computer and you're typing, or you're a nurse in a hospital, you're working, you're a painter, you're painting, you're a hairdresser, you're doing someone's hair, whatever, you're busy working. Let's say you're busy working and somebody, one of your colleagues or somebody comes and wants to start talking to you or discussing something that will take your focus away from your job. Okay, so in a way, it might be a bit distracting for you. You want to say to that person, sorry, I can't talk to you now because I'm busy working, but let's talk later. Okay, this is usually what we say. Sorry, I can't get my head around it now. Sorry, I can't get my head around it now now but let's talk later but let's talk later what does that mean and i'm going to put this in the caption what does it mean it means i'm so sorry i'm focusing on something right now i can't talk about your topic and discuss your topic because it'll distract me but let's talk about it later that's what it means sorry i can't get my head around it now it what is it it is what that other person wants to talk to me about, yeah? Sorry, I can't get my head around it now, but let's talk later. Very good. Thank you, Samira. Can't get my head around it now. Should I say hello to colleagues who are talking? Is it rude to interrupt them to say hello? Yes, yes. If someone is in the middle of talking online or in person, 
Usually what I do is I just give a little wave or just a little smile or something with my body language and they will usually reply with their body language because they're in the middle of talking. I can't jump in, hi. I know in Iran, if I'm not mistaken, uh, people are taught out of respect that when you enter a room out of respect, you say hello, yeah? Nice and loud, you say hello. Um, but we don't do that here. If two people are in the middle of talking, with our body language, with our face maybe, with a smile, with a little wave, that's how we say hi. Unfortunately, there are lots of native English speakers who will hi in the middle of my speaking and we always think, hmm, that's a bit rude, but we don't say anything. So it's very good if you can say hi with your body language, just a little maybe wink or smile or something like this, that's enough to say hi. Uh, I can't get my head around it now. Very good. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. There's so much more I wanted to talk about tonight, but I didn't get time because I spoke a lot. <laughs> so, uh, I can't wrap my head around it. That's the same. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's the same as well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. خش خش تلفون وقتی یکی زنگ میزنه و ما صداشو بد میشنویم. چی میشه؟ Uh, sorry. How would we say that? Uh, sorry, I can't hear you clearly. Uh, sorry, the line is fuzzy. Ella, do we say that? I'm just going to check with my daughter. Do we say that? Sorry, the line's fuzzy. Sorry, I can't hear you clearly. If if you and me are talking on the phone and then there's like... You're breaking up or something. That's to do with... Uh, that's oh, to yeah, do... The line's fuzzy. The, we say the line's fuzzy. I'm just checking with my daughter. Yes, we usually say, sorry, the line is fuzzy. The line is fuzzy, fuzzy, F-U-Z-Z-Y, fuzzy. I'm just going to write it down so I put this in as well. That's خش خش صدا, yeah? You're cutting off وقتی که قط میشه, کامل قط میشه, yeah? If there is shh at the back and you can't hear it very clearly, we say the line is fuzzy, fuzzy. Sorry, the line is fuzzy. Could you say that again? Yeah, uh, the line is fuzzy. That's usually what we say. Fuzzy, F-U-Z-Z-Y, lovely. The line is fuzzy. Sorry, the line is fuzzy. Or sorry, you know, I didn't get that. Could you say that again? Very good. خیلی خوشگل میخندی لیلا جان. Oh dear. <laughs> Thank you. Um, lovely, that's it. Yes, fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody. I only wanted to take half an hour of your time. I've taken well over half an hour. Thank you for being with me. Let us see your daughter. You've seen, you've seen Ella, haven't you? In a few of the videos, you've seen Ella. She is taller than me now. That's it, because in the you have me No, no. Um, no, she's challenging me for something else. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so, lovely, lovely to see you all. Thank you very much. I will see you again on Sunday. Um, and hopefully these five lessons have been okay. And you have learned maybe a few idioms, a little bit about the culture maybe. So thank you once again for joining me. Uh, I hope these have been helpful to you. They will all be on YouTube all the time. So feel free to uh, watch them, learn from them. Any questions, please do send me a comment, a question, anything. Thank you so much. Have a very good evening. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>